everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octio Studio, and today I have a video for um, stamp carving using the Speedball products. I just felt like it. I was looking at a Pinterest board. I do have a stamp carving or stamp making Pinterest board. Um, I will link that in the description box below if you want to go look. And, and I saw some cute uh, stamps that were like different pieces that you could build cactuses out of and I thought that was really cool and I wanted to make some and um, in our pick a stick challenge there's a thing about using a handmade stamp so we were talking about that at the other channel of the live stream and and you know all that so anyway it was just on my mind so I decided to get out my uh, stuff this uh, pink stuff is made by Speedball and also this tool the red handled tool with the multiple tips uh, that live inside of it and then you can change them out that's also made by speedball and it's just for uh, rubber stamp carving and lino carving which um, I'm not sure what that lino stuff is made out of I assume linoleum but you can carve it as well and people will make whole big scenes out of that and then this is more for like uh, real easy it's it's soft and I have two different colors of it I have pink and I have blue and I'm not sure one of them is called Speedy Carve, I think, but I don't know what the difference is. But in the, later in the video, you see me use the blue one as well. But right now, I'm just p using up some scraps that um, were off of a different project that I did. And they were just in the bag. So uh, I decided to try to make all these little modular pieces that can fit together to make uh, different types of cactuses. So I started out with uh, drawing the, um, the things right onto the rubber with a pencil. You can also draw your picture on a piece of paper and then once you're happy with it, uh, you can transfer it onto the rubber. And the way that you do that is to take the paper, turn it over um, your drawing, turn it over and just like rub really hard with uh, a pencil on the back and then put that pencil-y, graphite -y side down onto the rubber and trace over your drawing that you've made. Or, you know, if you can't draw or you don't want to draw, you can always use things that you found on the internet or whatever and do it that way. But you can use the graphite that's on the back, you know, that you've scribbled with the pencil um, to transfer onto the rubber and then you'll know where to carve and where to cut. I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out my pieces. Um, a lot of times you would just leave the, the stamp in like a square and then just carve away the stuff that you don't want. Um, you know, you got your foreground and your background and it can be a little bit confusing when you first start as to which thing you're supposed to carve away and you might have to think about it a little bit. But for these, I'm just making the general oval or circular or whatever long um, long oval shapes that I want and then just all, the only carving part I'm doing is taking out uh, a relief area um, where the lines of the cactus would be just to give it a little bit of detail and I'm also um, the first one that I did I didn't do it but then I went back and did it again I'm making some like little X's on my lines, little teeny tiny X's that are supposed to represent the clusters of, of spines, the white clusters of spines that are on like say a barrel cactus. They kind of almost, it's, it's like they're almost very um, regimented as they go down the line and then it's like a little burst of white bits. Not all cactuses have those. There's tons and tons of varieties and some cactuses have tiny spines all over them some cactuses have very large spines <clears throat> the only thing I can say about spines is don't back into a cactus because they're very uncomfortable when they're in your bottom <laughs> I'll just tell you that also uh, don't go out um, my, my kid will tell you this don't go out to to a cactus area and start swinging sticks around and knocking cactuses 
because there are types that will separate. Um, the way that they propagate is to separate a piece of themselves, like when an animal goes by and that little piece gets stuck into the the fur of the animal, like a javelina or something, and then it gets carried away to another area, eventually drops off, and that's how that plant grows another plant. But uh, when my kid was little, he had a friend over and they were out in the wash and they hit one of the those type of cactuses with a stick and the piece came off and it hit the other kid in the face and stuck to his face. And to this day, we, ki we call that kid Cactus Face. Um, yeah, that was very horrifying. <laughs> that was horrifying when they came back and I tried to get it off and, and you know, it's like you're supposed to be watching this child and you're responsible for this horrifying thing that happened and anyway, it was, yeah, bad news. But kids are all grown up now. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm sure that mom still thinks about it. Why wasn't that woman watching my child? How did he get a cactus in his face? So anyway, that's completely off track. <laughs> I'm still carving. I've made several different little pieces, including a little flower shape that really is kind of misshapen because of the shape of this scrap that I was using. But anyway, <clears throat> here I am stamping some of them. I went and got a few pieces of white uh, card and I'm just trying out the stamps to see how I can make a scene using the different stamps and um, you know adding arms and, a and adding clusters and just generally trying it out. Uh, some of the pads or some of the pieces that I made look like prickly pear cactus pads and some look like bar barrel cactuses and some look like the beginning of a saguaro cactus so I've kind of got a variety of things <laughs> that I'm trying out but uh, like that one looks like a barrel cactus and then that little kind of almost heart shaped one looks like a prickly pear cactus pad oftentimes they will be heart shaped um, and they just kind of grow off of each other in segments and it's just they're very interesting plants and so I thought it would be fun since I live here uh, with all the cactuses that that it would be fun if I had these little modular stamps to play with. So now I um, got back a couple of those scraps <clears throat> and I decide I need an even smaller little piece um, that uh, on the prickly pears they bloom in the spring and then the bloom turns into a fruit and it's kind of a it becomes kind of a pink um, I don't know oblong oval shaped fruit so I decided to make um, something that I could use as that as well so it's even smaller than the others and I'm trying it out now I think it looks pretty good they also have spines, so when you want to use the fruit, you have to take one of those uh, um, gas, uh, the things that you use to do creme brulee, you know, the little gas flamey things. You can take one of those and um, go over the cactus fruit, over the skin, and burn off all the spines, and then you can make them into all kinds of stuff. Um, make syrups, candy, jello, um, all kinds of little things out of them. So. It's a different, interesting taste. So now another of the Pinterest um, homemade stamps that I saw that I thought was really cool is a pomegranate. And so I decided to make one of those using this other color rubber. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is. It seemed the same to me. This one might be a little bit more crumbly maybe. Um, not quite as clean of lines. So I drew my pomegranate shape on there and now I'm carving around it. The, the blade that I'm using on my tool is got a very deep V on it. <clears throat> so it's giving me pretty fine lines. There are all different ones. Some of them are fatter. Some of them are more for clearing off excess on the edges. Some of them are for the detailing. Uh, I I tend to just like put one on and I kind of stick with it. <laughs> I don't switch them out that much, but I should. 
Um, I'm making kind of little circular shapes where the pomegranate uh, seed slash fruit is in the side of the pomegranate. Um, I just thought it was a cool image. I think it could also be used as one of those uh, pods that comes after sunflower. I'm not sure what, but it's got a very sturdy long stalk and and then it ends up with this this brown pod on the end of it that ends up having seeds once it's dried out. Um, I'm sure someone here will tell me <laughs> what that is. I don't really know. Um, I haven't seen one in a long time. They don't grow in the desert. I think it might actually grow in wetlands maybe. I'm not sure. But anyway, I know what it looks like. I just don't know what it's called. And I think if you put this on a stalk, it would look like one of those seed pods. So I might do that later too. But um, kind of a fall thing. I've seen it used in fall decorations a lot, like dried floral arrangements and stuff like that. So then I'm just clearing off the edges of my stamp. Um, it could have been better. This one could have been better. And the picture that I saw on Pinterest doesn't look exactly like this. It's more, it's cooler than this. I, I did it wrong. But anyway, <laughs> you guys can go look it up if you want. <laughs> but this one's pretty cool. I'm sure I'll use it, you know, for, for things, stuff and things. So then I get out some more paper, try this one out. And you can see that the lines aren't as crisp on it. And I think it's because this, this piece of, this color of rubber is just kind of crumbly. It kind of, some of the bits of it kind of crumble off. So I'm not sure why that is or what the benefit of that would be, but it's not as crisp as the pink. So I think I like the pink kind better than this blue kind. So there's my little pomegranate and my little, <coughs> excuse me, cactus scene. I decided to fill in the background with just quick, very, very quick uh, watercolor using my koi um, watercolors and these are my water brushes that I soaked <laughs> and they seem to be doing better the water's coming out of them now um, I'm not sure if they're 100% repaired but one of them that I end up using I think at the end which has the smaller uh, tip on it p black pieces of sludge keep coming out of it so that's probably what was jamming it up inside the the thing. I don't know, but anyway, they're better. I probably need to stop using them with acrylic paint or using these not so great ones with acrylic paint and getting myself some nicer ones to use with watercolor, some new ones. And then keeping those watercolor ones away from the acrylic ones. <laughs> so I'm just uh, filling in my stamped scene with different colors. I've got uh, yellow and orange and then some kind of a olive color and I end up splattering with that and filling in the insides of the um, pomegranates with that. But then, then it occurs to me that <clears throat> the membrane inside of a pomegranate is actually white. So I should have just left it white. But anyway, did it, done, it's over. I was just messing around making these into a couple little cards. On this one, I decided to just paint in a blue background with my watercolors. Now this paper is not meant for watercoloring. It's terrible for watercoloring. It's blotchy. Um, you can't smooth it. It starts to buckle. It starts to uh, pill. It's, it's stamping paper. It is not watercolor paper. It's terrible. But I did it anyway because I'm a rebel can do what I want <laughs> or else I'm just crazy it's, it's a toss-up so then I finish up these cards um, doing some layering and adding some ribbons and stuff which you will see I think I'm just going to turn on some music and let you watch the rest of the finishing because I really don't have anything more to stay about to say not stay say about stamp carving and you know, I end up using tacky glue to glue this together because that paper is buckled and uh, 
it's still a little bit wet so I'm trying to get it as smooth as possible so I want a glue that will cover the whole thing on the back and then I just continue with the tacky glue and finish gluing it all together so you will see the cards at the end and the um, stuff that I used the speedball stuff that I used uh, there'll be links to Amazon where you can purchase that I hope you've enjoyed this please leave me a thumbs up and a comment all that stuff if you liked it and if you have any questions about this uh, process I'm not sure that I'm an expert but I can probably answer your question you can leave your question in the comments so that's it for me thanks bye bye